All right, y'all. Good morning from Timbertown. This is Jay coming in. Going to go check in with Dan here. We got some cool stuff to show you tonight. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Timbertown. I'm glad that you guys are with us. So today, Jason and I are talking about how to process your dried wood that you've had dried into finished material. And this is actually stuff that's, I'm going to tell you, is almost two years old. It's been in and out of our kiln. And I knew I wanted to use this for the carriage house because that's where it got cut from. And we're going to make all of the boxes for the kitchen cabinets out of this stuff. Now, before it leaves the shop here today, and before we actually finish it, look at how this is going to look. You don't need to buy plywood. You don't need to do anything. Who has a solid oak kitchen cabinet? All the cabinets, I mean, without that press board stuff. So we're gonna show you how to take this that you had dried, turn it into this, and then we're gonna take you down to the shop. We're gonna show you how we process it, put it together, show you a box cabinet or two. So stick with us. We've got a lot to show you today. Okay, my friends, you know when you get your dried wood out there, everybody's always asking about the chips, the cracks, and things like that. This is why we leave our boards as wide as we can. Um, and then we're just gonna cut the cracks out later where nature is. If you make everything so small, it seems to walk on you. You're gonna get a lot more bent boards. So these are actually pretty straight, but what we wanna do is to get the most of the material out of here is we're gonna make a cut get rid of this crack, line it up with this. Now you could easily do it on a table saw. Two guys timber framing is actually a little weak on the table saw. And we got it set up down in the shop, finishing up some of the doors. But what I actually use is my inline rip saw. And you'll see, guys, I mean, for me, I can make a cut, use my laser, point exactly where I want to be, flip the board, run it through straight, machine is guaranteed to cut it straight so this is my table saw i love this machine dan you love what i love this machine i love this machine jay <laughs> so basically i'm going to put my board up on the laser right there where that crack is and wherever this laser is actually hitting, I'm gonna line up right here. That's what I want. That's where that board is gonna be cut when well, I'm done. You see my friends, crack cut perfectly out. Now that board is not straight yet. So what I would have to do is I come back and I would set the depth that I'm going to cut and this looks like it's going to be a four inch piece. I run my cut edge directly against here. Once the feed takes over, okay, perfectly straight. Oh my friend. Let me shut this down. So for me, what we're trying to do is size the boards that we're going to be using. And we're going to actually be gluing all these together, making panels. So our cuts need to be straight. So if you're using your standard table saw, it's not going to go as fast as this, not going to go as easy, can totally be done. You can cut perfect boards like this. So, and for everybody else, normally Jay and I would do a stack of this. So we'd be cutting cracks, cutting cracks, cutting cracks setting my gauge, running sixes, eights, tens, twelves, whatever I can get out of the board. So we're reading it on the second cut after we get rid of it. So after that, normally we run it through, I wanna say kind of we have a bevy of planers up here in the mill shop, but today, 
took out Dad's little one, but we usually use him as a mobile guy. So I like to keep his blade sharp because I'm usually needing him for some reason in the middle of somewhere, nowhere. So for you guys, I know almost everybody has this. So why not? If you're using your sawmill to cut your lumber, make yourself your own table to work off of. I mean, I didn't go crazy. I thought about this this morning. I'm like, cut a couple blocks, put your planer up on here. If you guys are doing long boards, put it in the middle, make yourself a rack. Multifunctional. Multifunctional. I try to use this thing for everything. Hang on, boy. One set, yeah. So fellas, at this process, we're not trying to plane that to be a perfect board. This is perfectly fine for where we're going to start. We're going to have to do some more planing later on, or sanding, or, or something as we put, or nothing. To be honest, when I've stained this, this stuff looks beautiful. It looks rustic. So really, you just do both sides of your board. All you're trying to do is get yourself everything squared off. Then we're going to take all this stuff down to the shop. We're going to show you how we glue it up. And then we'll show you how a cabinet is actually processed. Simple, easy, really can be done with a lit. I didn't even mention if you don't, you don't have a giant table saw, you don't have anything. You have a portable table saw. Take this off, put your portable table saw on. Now you got yourself a big place to cut your wood. Stable, not shaking on some horse. Yeah, look at that mess. <laughs> Talk You're talking what I'm talking about, Jay. <laughs> That's now just a storage rack back there. <laughs> What's under the tarp? <laughs> so we're going to take you down to the carriage house. You're going to check out what we got going on. But that's a way, my friends, to use all your wood, dried wood. We are going to make finished, finished furniture out of this. It's going to be good. I consider cabinets of furniture. And when you see what it looks like, you're going to agree. Let's go so, check it out. Let's go check it out. Okay, now we're down at the carriage house now, and this is actually the first project we're even trying uh, before we set up the shop. We're kind of trying to get the feel for the space before we make the final moves. But all the wood that we just bought down from the mill with our first preliminary plane, what we do is we already have the plan made so we know the size box is what we need. So Jay comes up, sizes the boards that we need to make the panels that we want to do. Then we go on over here, guys. Now I know not a lot of you are gonna have this thing, but this is an old school rotary door press that I bought off an old man's shop that was retiring. I actually saw it and uh, I had to have it. That's I great. had to have it. But honestly for us, it's ridiculous on how we're able to clamp all of our stuff. Right there, I have four full cabinets onto a rotation. So that's where, I, that's where my limitation is. I could build only so much, gotta let everything dry. So we come back down every morning and we actually do a rotation. So Jay's already got our board size for what we want. So real simple here. We usually glue over on the table, but I'll glue right here. Except we got this really good tape on the top today. I love this press. The press is crazy, Jay. So, I mean, guys, I know it makes a mess. We just spent uh, the day cleaning up this old man's mess that's been here for 50 years. So just get yourself an ample amount of glue down your joint line. And I'll show you a piece that we have that's glued together and the grain is actually going to break before this glue joint. That stuff is strong. It's strong. Just lost some light, Jay. I know, it's bad light. See, now we're looking and we kind of got our light in a position that when my press is full, I lose a little bit of light. But simple enough, guys. We just put it here. Now, I know you're not going to have this kind of press. You could just take your clamps and actually clamp everything. Do it on a table because these are oversized. I'm going to show you here in a minute. We're actually going to cut them down to the exact size we need before we do the final step of what we've got to do. So 
really for us pretty simple crank it down not too much get the glue on there that's it for us then we actually rotate it we can take the panels off put another layer on rotate it panels off another layer on these have been up here since yesterday so as we come in in the morning we're trying to get a set ready to get glued so we pull out the panels that we had glued from yesterday now they need to be sized because we know uh, the panels that here need to be pretty accurate so what I do we come on back now I told you about our little table saw here and for all the other equipment we got, this is pretty on the uh, low side, my friend. <laughs> but um, I'm going to have to put the blower on. And really what we're going to do is we're going to just trim off the edge and make this panel square for what we want. I know that I need to be 31 and 5 eighths. That's my measurement. Stick it a little, Jay. Okay? I need to put a little bit more slipping on that. But here, here's a little baby glue. You would actually think it's gonna break on the glue. Never gonna happen. Even that piece, it looked like it did, did not, right next to it. So, your connection is strong, not a real problem at all. Here we gotta do just one side. I know we're 11 and a quarter. There we go, our panel is sized. This is the exact size that we're gonna need. So really the next step that we do, run it through our time saver. And I'm gonna have to flip around a couple hoses cause we're not set up here, but I'll show you how quick this is. We make one more cut on the shaper or your trusty table saw again, if you have a dado blade. I'll show you uh, the two different ways that you could do that. So there we have it fellas, making yourself a kitchen cabinet in time all right your boards they're all sized for what you actually want to do i'm pretty sure i know i want that to be my face piece but i will sand off both sides and then i'll make one side pretty uh let's call it close to perfect as i want so you really don't need a planer i know you actually might not have uh Sander like this, I guess you could use a belt sander. I mean, for me, guys, one pass. Now, I still need to go a little bit more because I still see a little edge right here in the glue. I'm going to flip over the back. Just get rid of this side. I forgot about catching it. I'm usually there to catch it for you, Dan. Oh, oh. All right, probably one more pass and this thing is actually gonna be complete. Slowed him down a little bit. He'll actually do a little bit more, maybe too slow. Maybe a little too slow. Yeah, we're still getting done. There it is, guys. Two passes. You cannot even see the seam. Tilt it up. Here, tilt it up. There you go. Helping you out. Can't even see the seam in this. I do like to see the seams in the dip and wood grain. 
why would you buy three quarter inch old plywood when you can make your own? So this is actually going to be the inside of the cabinets and the parts of the cabinets you're barely even ever going to see. So imagine what we do to the front of these things. It's going to be beautiful. I'm telling you guys, use all the wood you got. There's a lot of different ways to do this stuff, but we're going to cut the edge for you here. We'll assemble a cabinet real quick for you and um, at least get you started on that way. See ya. Next time on Dan Does Cabinets. Next yeah, time. absolutely. Always exciting. All right. So now that we've actually joined everything, we sized everything, we also sanded everything. So now it's actually ready to cut the joint in that we're going to actually uh, build the cabinetry with. You see how it'll glue together and nail together. Now I am using my shaper table. This can be done in a lot of different ways. This is really nothing more than a glorified router table. So you could actually use a smaller router table to cut this in. You could use a hand router with a guide if you had to, to cut this in. You could also use your table saw for this whole project if you have a daddle blade, because you're going to have to cut a little thicker than a blade that, that it has. So really, this is pretty simple operation. Let me get some uh, suction going. Almost went the wrong way, guys. That's why I marked it, so I should know which way I'm going. Good catch, man. Boom. And really, that's all we're going to need. So when we're joining the corners like this, this piece is going to get locked into here. We've got a double side glue and we actually can nail to it. So there's only three sides of this that you actually have to produce these sides to, just the two sides. The bottom, really that's it. And then everything else will be glued together just like a big puzzle. So that's really how simple it is to get your groove put into your boxes. You'll see it when we go down there to assemble this of exactly how easy this actually goes together and how strong this is. This is not that particle board, man. This is crazy. Oh, interior of the cabinet. I'm sure you can use pine, cedar, anything. We have a lot of oak. So we're going to finish the joints that we got on these couple cabinets and we'll take them down to the carriage house and we will assemble for you and show you how the boxes go easy together. So we'll get back with you when we get down to the carriage house. Want to bang on that thing a few more times, Dan, or hit it maybe with a sledgehammer? You know how it is, Jay. It's oak. <laughs> it doesn't even finish oak. You just can't dent it. That's why I love this stuff. We're hard on things, Jay and I. Yes, yes we are. I mean, that's all I can say. Nice job, Dan. I got to go, boys. <laughs> all right, guys. Now we've got all of our things cut that we just did on our shaper for all our pieces. Jay and I have actually been assembling all our boxes here this morning. So this is going to be the boxes for our uh, kitchen cabinets, as you know. Now also, we do our own plans right here. And that's actually the kitchen that we're building right now. So for us, real simple. Boom. I go to the cabinet I need. I've got all my cut sheets. I know the panels that I need. So a little bit of thought process and uh, it'll make this easier for you because you got to number everything because you get to end up with a million pieces as Jay and I know. So we're going to assemble a quick one for you, show you pretty much how simple the boxes go together and uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, Jay. Okay. What do we got? What do we got? So what we're doing now is we're gluing the actual joint. Doesn't matter which one you grab, it's gonna be the wrong one. Okay. This is how we <laughs> operate that's here. That's how it works. Two hey, Jay! I think it's still First the shot, is brother. Is there a wrong one there? I don't know about that. You good? Good, yeah, I got the top. So what we're doing, guys, we're just getting everything clamped together. Oh. 
I'm gonna make sure that I'm perfectly fit, square, where I need to be. I need a tiny adjustment here. Maybe I need more of a tiny. Little tap. Hey, oh, a little too much. Too much tiny? Oh, no, no, you got it. Sorry. That's a pretty good tiny, Jay. That's good. All right. All right, let's, let's pull it out to me a little. Okay. Boom. There you go. So we're basically oh, clamping our seam four ways. If I can get the clamp to work. There you go. Boom. There we go. Now what we're doing is I'm running inch and a quarter staples. Into the side of the box, you're not going to see. This way. Okay. Oh. Tighten my clamp back up, Jay. Let me hold this one. There you go. Just make awesome. sure all your stuff is tight, fellas. That's it, the most important part. So now we're double shooting the lap here that we made. So you've got glue on two sides. I know you could just leave this clamp like this all night and be good with it, with those staples. I promise you it's not coming out because we <laughs> assembled one wrong and we had to dismantle it. Now we're going to have to make two pieces. That's I wasn't, all I had to say. I wasn't going to tell anyone. <laughs> I'm telling them, Jay, because everybody makes mistakes. I did not want to come everybody, out. It was strong. It was my fault, Jay. It was my oh, fault. Oh, thank God. All right. All right. So basically, guys, the same thing. Glue the joint. Hopefully we cut it right. We did, Jay. All right, good. It's a perfect, perfect day when everything's cut right. You got a hold of that? Yep, got it. Can you clamp all the holds? I can get a clamp on her, man. All right. I can get a clamp on her. Get one. Uh-oh. Here. Give me a little room. There you go. There we go. Let me just check. Now you gotta make sure you check and make sure that your lineup is square. I need a little adjustment. happy with that. Well, I'm good. happy with that, Jay. Well, good. Then we're all going to be happy. Everybody's happy. Everybody's when happy. My wife is happy. <laughs> you guys know the theory. <laughs> and girls, you know you got the power. <laughs> it's, it's a given. It's a given. We love it anyway. I'm going to go the other way with this one. Okay. Here, let me. There you go. So there we go, we got our lap nice and tight. Make sure you're not shooting, your staples have to go. So you don't shoot through your finished wood, boys. Shoot straight. Dan, I have to say you've been doing a great job stapling. I've been doing a great job. The one we did wasn't because of my shooting. There you go. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm glad I'm not shooting. up on there buddy what's that got a little issue right there okay. boom all right off off back panel do it oh look how nice that looks let's see that's our that's our inside right let's there. make sure the inside's the yeah, inside yeah that looks good dinky I was really surprised how gluing these panels together, how nicely they come out like that. They come out beautiful. beautiful. You cannot see them. You can't see the seam, but I do like when there's variation in them. I do too. But you can't. You, you know, this is going to look 100% totally different. Come in that way. There you go. When we put the stain, when we put the varnish on this. Now, I don't even know if I decided on a color yet. But Brown there shimmer. we go. Boxes together. Make sure you clamp, boys. Get that out of there. Hold on. 
And make sure when you actually put your stuff together that it is going naturally. Give me a little bit. There you go. So now you know your corner is going to be tight in both directions, square with the wood. You, I know it's hard for you to see. You can tell by the glue squishing out of here. There you go. And there All we right. have it. Enough clamps, just work your way up. You get that pipe clamp over here? Yeah, which way are you going? This right. way? Yeah. Alright, yeah, we need a little bit of pressure in there. Need a little pressure. There you go. Yeah, Perfect. there it is. You see how that sucked right in? There it is. That's it. Our corner is done, guys. Did I miss? You have, still not, good. you have not missed. Have not missed. I can, I can attest to it. It's true. If anything, guys, I'm actually aiming slightly towards the back because I don't care if it comes through. Look at that. Oh, we got through. There they are. Had a misfire. All good. There we go. Upper cabinet number, I don't know. <laughs> don't get it. We've had a number issue all, all day long. <laughs> Upper cabinet, I don't know. So much for the computer. That's it, fellas. That's how easy it is to assemble your boxes. Okay? There. That thing. Boom. Now we're going to let, what we do is we let our glue dry off a little. Not totally solid. We're going to come back with a knife. Boop, boop, cut them out. And look, I, mean, I know it's tough to see. We'll try to get you better pictures, but this is a beautiful cabinet. Piece of furniture, like I said. So, buddy, that's as easy as it can really get. There's a kitchen cabinet. No going to Walmart, Lowe's, or wherever the heck you buy cabinets. I really never bought any, so I don't know. It's substantial. It's substantial. And I'm going to tell you, fellas, make sure your wall it's strong because <laughs> these are old cabinets without the frames on them they're actually really heavy well this is timber frame so yeah, i mean it does make sense and everybody but knows that i'm going to be the one cutting the glue out of the things jay you're cutting the glue <laughs> jay is my glue cutter guys okay well that's how simple and easy it is to actually make your boxes for your kitchen cabinets uh bookshelves I don't know, keep going. Anything you want. You make your cut sheet. You're making the wood. You can do anything. It doesn't have to be standard. It could be custom. But there we go, guys. Nice oak stuff. Oak wood, chestnut oak, all cut from this property. Dried properly, glued properly, sanded properly. Yes, there's a technique, but a little practice, anybody can do that. Well, I'm doing it. So You're you doing go. it. Jay's doing it. That's a testament to what I just said. Exactly. Okay, guys. So after we build our boxes up on the table, showed you what we have, we actually, for the upper cabinets, then install the upper top pieces here. So it's basically exactly the same as the bottom. Put it on. Locks everything together square. Uh, we just do it the next day so we don't have a bunch of glue dripping everywhere and making more work. But right now, what we're doing is putting the bracing, the final bracing that we're going to put in the cabinet so that you can hold and fasten into your countertop. Also keeps the cabinet square before we put our faces on. So this is pretty uh, simple, as I always say. I don't know if I'm allowed to say so ourselves, but boy, I think this came out really good, Dan. It came out <laughs> good. It came out really nice. Nobody likes it. They don't like it. I yes, love it. Well, I got to be proud of our work. So I'm very proud of our work, Jason. These are hefty too. These are hefty. These are actually some of the nicer cabinets I've built. 
Could put, put pure granite on top it's of actually, it. <laughs> you could put pure <laughs> granite that that's thick on this thing. <laughs> and make sure that the timber frame can handle it. But really, just putting the tops in, gluing it in, they don't want to hear us joking around there. They want to see cabinets. <laughs> Bang, boys. Pretty much for that, that's it. I put one in the back. Give yourself perfect, perfect place to fasten. If anybody's put a countertop in before, you know that the ones from the store do not leave you anywhere that you can actually fasten a countertop, lock this whole thing together. So, pretty simple. Clamp and glue situation. I like to squeeze in everything tight so the glue is tight, the joint will be tight, and when I make my fasteners, it'll stay. So guys, for your own sturdy cabinets, I mean, you're not getting this from the store. I promise you, you're barely getting this from a custom shop, maybe a super high-end custom shop. These things are strong and they're beautiful so why would you go to the store and buy wood when you could just take some small pieces you don't even need big logs look I'm working less than 36 so Jason and I assembled all this stuff here in the last few days and um, Didn't take we're gonna long. get to do like building the corner cabinet Jay okay onward and onward onward and upward oh yeah that's right All right, guys, so you can see your sawmill. You don't just cut your two by fours and your cans. All of your wood, finished material, furniture grade material. So that's all that we're gonna have for you this week. Next time we will uh, show you how we actually make the faces and what this is gonna look like once it's all dried and we actually lacquer it because the color is just gonna burst out of this, so. Hopefully you guys enjoyed what we had to show you today. You can see that you can actually do anything with a couple of uh, little tools that you probably already have in your shop. So I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching.